Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of The Daily Creative. I'm Chase. Uh, hopefully you're familiar with the videos. I do these all the time and the short version is that I answer your questions on your journey of becoming uh, an amateur or maybe even a professional creative. We're all in this together, we all get stuck and my feeling is if we share the answers to the questions that we've personally endured or heard from others, great solutions to problems that we can all be better off, rising tide floats all the boats. So that's the nature of this question or that's the nature of the show. And I do have a call-in number if you like what you see and you want your question answered, dial 802-962-4357. Um, but I got a couple questions queued up and we're just gonna go right right to them. Go ahead, Finn. Hey, Jay, my name is Rad from Orlando. I right. wanted to know how you handle it if your vision for a photo shoot just isn't working out. Whatever you see in your head, you just can't get the lighting to work or the poses aren't working. Just nothing is quite working out and every tweak you make just isn't making it happen. Do you scrap the idea and start fresh? Or do you ask the client what they think? Or do you ask your team for help? Or just how you handle that situation in general? Mm. All right, man. Thanks. I love this question. And I love this question because it, it's, it's complex. And it's my prescription is based on 15 years of living that exact moment that you're talking about. Now, um, so th this is not just true for photography. That's a really important thing. This is true for any sort of client work. If the client's looking over your shoulder or if you gotta send something, you're on a deadline, all, we're, all of these instances have the same response. Um, uh, I think f first of all, this is, this moment, what you're talking about right here, this is what it means to be professional. The difference between a great golfer and a professional golfer is the professional golfer, and I don't know why I use golf all the time. I hate golf. I don't hate golf. That's not true. I don't hate it. But um, I do it because it's a weird sort of esoteric thing, and, and maybe being a professional photographer is a weird esoteric thing. But the difference between someone who's really good and someone who does it for a living, you might think it's here, but it's really it's here. Because when you do it for a living, your ass is on the line all the time and sure you can make mistakes but if you totally blow up a photo shoot and, and if something's you know at first the budgets aren't going to be like this but if there it's a big expensive budget and you blow it you, you don't get called back so the pressure can be quite high and putting yourself in these small moments over and over as an, an amateur or an aspiring photographer that's what prepares you to when you're in that moment you are a master you know the solution you can visualize it in your mind and you can get there uh, I'm going to quote some Ira Glass shit. So Ira, Ira Glass talks about the creative gap. That's the gap between the, under, the, the photo or whatever outcome as a creator you can see in your mind's eye and, sorry, and your ability to actually deliver on that. So I feel that if I have enough time, money, and resources, I can make literally any photograph. I, I feel like I have mastered the craft. It came through years and years and years of putting myself in those small, scary moments where I didn't know if I was going to be able to and, and pulled it off by the skin of my teeth. So um, I, wanna, I wanna be sure that I'm not answering your question in such a way that it doesn't actually answer where you are now, but I'm trying to, like that's the goal. The goal is that you, you live in mastery and you're right now on a journey to that end, but that is the goal that you have. And by mastery, this is another really critical point that I maybe should have led with. It doesn't just mean you're good at your craft. This is a really important thing for you to remember. Being good at your craft is one thing, being able to, to master the whole entire set. As the director in a film world or even as a photographer, you have to be able to direct the model to do exactly what you want, and that is an art form in and of itself. How you talk to people, how you motivate them, how you get them excited. You can read people, emotional intelligence, off the charts, requirement for being a great artist, I believe, that helps you. That's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an unsung hero in the ability to get what you want out of a particular situation. You need to be able to motivate, inspire, coach, cajole, um, respond, take in what other people are feeling such that you can, um, uh, you can master the response that's gonna get the outcome that you want. So it's not just being a good photographer, you need to be able to coach, you know, it's like a symphony, you're a conductor. And the same is true if you're a designer and you've got other designers and you've got a client, like the client presentation. These are, these are aspects of being a professional creator that are way unsung, that are hugely, these are the difference makers. These are why you get called back. 
It's not just the art. The art, absolutely, the work has to be there. That's the first part of it, but that's what I mean. It's just part one. Making great stuff, that'll make the phone ring. Making great stuff and creating a great experience for the client, that makes them come back. And it's the repeat business that's gonna make you wildly successful relative to your peers. So get, hear me right now, get good at, at that shit. Get good at all of the other stuff. Of course, craft first. None of this replaces craft. But people will maybe back off of the, the amazing craft if you have mastery of all these other things because the client, in your case on a photo shoot, they are, they are expecting an experience along, even if they don't say it, along with the outcome. So, um, and the way you do this is you do it over and over and over and over. You actually acknowledge that this is a thing, which most people don't. They're just gonna go in and buy a new camera and nerd out on the gear and the settings and shit. Do not do that. Master all of the stuff around it. And the way you master that is through repetition. So, I, I, this is a huge deal, right? It's, yeah, like, this is, this is massive. This is a, it's gonna be a catapult for your career. I'm super happy you shared it. Um, I'll, I'll go, I mean, one other little tangent, which is to actually ask, to answer the question, because even as a master, sometimes it might be exactly what you envisioned, but it doesn't feel good or the client's not vibing on it. And there's a couple of little ways to think about it. One, generally what you're doing on set, especially if you have a commercial client, is your first goal is to check the box around the photograph that they thought that they wanted, the reason that they hired you. You've spent time preparing, you have sketches and mock-ups and all these things. You need to do what I call is get that in the can. And that's the thing where the client is like, okay, does it have this box to check, this, this? Are the, you know, is the product scene nice? Do you, can you see the logo? Are they living our brand values or whatever? And if the client's going, yeah, 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 that's awesome, check, check, check. I believe that, and, and this is my own experience, the best time, the best photograph, the best design, the best, it delivers something beyond the expectation of the client. The first thing you gotta do is get the box checked, and then the whole time I'm thinking as soon as I can get the box checked, like I got these other three or four things that I wanna do, and it, it, I can actually think of a time here in, in real time where the photograph that I was able to deliver above and beyond the required shot for the job to check the box wasn't ultimately selected in the final edit process. And that's where when you are master at your craft, and this is why mastering your craft is the first thing you need to do, not independent of these other things, but you have to get good at that because you can't be thinking about all the settings and shit while you're trying to do all this other stuff. That's why you master the craft. If you're thinking like, what's the difference between the X4, F4, and F5, 6? Or what's the difference between these two brushes in Photoshop? That needs to be just, just, you don't have to think about it. It's like driving. That when you are in that moment and you're looking for all these little expected things, like the sun is reflecting off that, that building and it's you know putting this really cool glint and you can get that extra, the zhuzh, zhuzh, zhuzh. <laughs> get the extra zhuzh. How do you spell that? Zhuzh is, is it's Z, 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 C, A, S, S, S. I can't even say letters now, actually. I'm saying letters that don't exist. You get the point. I hope you get the point. Master your craft, add the extra something once you've checked the box. Because if you just go for the weird stuff, the client's gonna be looking at their watch like, wait a minute, I thought we agreed you're gonna do this thing. Well, you need to be just like showing the back of the camera or to presenting your ideas or your designs or whatever craft that you are in to make a living. Um, is there anything else I wanted to say about that? I feel like there was something, I can't remember it. We're nine minutes in. Hey. I love you guys. I hope you find this valuable. I, I got a quick thought. That is, if you're sharing this, it's my hope that the people who you share this with in your network, they look to you as like, wow, that's cool. I got a lot of value and I wanna share that. And this isn't just some ploy for me to get you to share stuff. This is actually how I built my following was I, I found things in the world and I made videos about them, about my learning I made, I shared anything that I found out with my community. And in turn, the community then said like, wow, the Chase guy, he does a lot to add value and he has nothing really to gain. So rising tide floats all boats. And in, in turn, that creates a relationship with you and the other person who you add value to. So I am asking you overtly to share this because I believe it will not just help me, but I think it'll help you even more than, I'm, I'm fine, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do okay. 
Um, but I think if you share it, you might get some extra juice from your homies. So also, if you have a question, I answer these things all the time. I record these shows regularly on the regs. And the way you get your question answered is to dial 1-802-962-4357. I listen to your voicemails. Sometimes I call you back and we record it live on the show. But most often, I just I play that voicemail. And um, so hit me up with your questions. Thanks for sharing. Thanks for paying attention. Like and comment, all that stuff. You know the rules. Rules? Not rules. The asks. All right. Signing up until tomorrow.